Hello, and welcome. I'm Zinder, and here we are once again playing Resonant Rise. And I've got the uh, the elevator. I want to make a few tweaks to this eventually, but the code is pretty much good to go. Now, there is a few quirks other than that, although I think that's a bug with uh, Engineer's Toolbox. But for some reason, there's a persistency bug. It might be fixed in later versions of open computers, but I don't know. Basically, if I were to exit the game and come back in, these buttons may not work as I as expected. So, I highly suggest that you never go to floor one after initially loading your world. I had an issue where it continued up past the uh, the bar, and I could probably create some kind of a you know piece of code to resolve that. But all in all, it's m pretty functional. It's all controlled by this one computer. I had to make a uh, a tier 3 computer. Well, I didn't have to, but I wanted to make sure I could support it. And I was running out of memory while editing, so I made a tier 3.5, which is pretty simple. It's just three tier 3 microchips and a circuit board, which is just diamonds and a transistor. So this took 12 diamonds, and then I made a highest tier CPU which takes tier 3 microchips and some emeralds. Hard drive's the same, though. In fact, it's the hard drive from my uh, Floor 2 from before. So, yeah. Now, it's set up to automatically bind to the screen. Right here is my verbose output on the, the floor movements. In case I ever have an issue, I can track it down. So, for example, I told it... You know, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I was on floor two, and I told it I wanted to go to floor one, and it went up. It tried to go up twice, which meant that it hit the ceiling. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure that's a persistency issue, although that might be an issue with RedNet or something else, but here's what I've got. Now, S primary, that's screen primary, which in this case refers to this screen. This makes sure it always comes back to this screen after it completes its operations. S floors is the monitor addresses for every floor. Now, I don't know why, but sometimes this goes very, very slowly, as I'm sure you can see. And I'm not actually... Yeah, once my end process. So I have four monitors set up in here. Now... Down here, I have it set up, so if you want, you can actively change these based on your setup to match the colors. These are the, the crossbars where they hit the redstone block on the bottom of the elevator that determines what floor it's at. So, it's CLR floors. And this is just a quick thing. As you can see, I put comments in here in case you were to ever forget. So, we've got the uh, C floor, which stands for current floor. It's a variable that I wanted to make sure was a global variable, variable just in case. I don't know enough about Lua to know that I, if I need this or not. But uh, what this does, these things are stored as tables. That's what the uh, squiggly brackets are for. I'm not sure of their technical term. But anyhow, curvy bracket. I think that's the actual name. But anyhow, uh, they're stored as tables. So what this does, this will go through the table of color floors and... It will basically take n floors, which I defined here, and add plus one to it. So once it reaches the final in the list of colors, it'll stop, and then it'll be left with a single number. This is never called back, so what it does is it runs this once, begin the application, and that's it. It's done. Now, you have to make sure that for every color you have entered, you have a monitor, and vice versa. Now, this right here, this program will actually determine which direction it needs to go whenever you click a given button. Uh, floor D is a variable provided by the touchscreen module, which determines where you clicked, and thus determining which floor you want to go to. So, I don't actually know if the draw weight works, because I wasn't paying attention, but it's supposed to draw... You know, let's just... Let's just go check that real quick. Because I don't need to be on the elevator. I can call it back up to the floor because it's based on what you click. So once it stops moving, that should go away. Yeah. And now since I'm on floor 2, I just right-click on the 2. 
it technically supports uh, one height lower and higher than it, but I I haven't quite fully figured out how the coloring works in open computers yet, so we're stuck with just black and white at the moment. But if we go back over here, as you can see, I told it to go to three, it determined it needs to move one floor, and then I told it to come back to two and determined it needs to move one floor. So what this is doing is if the current floor, which is achieved by the get floor function, it will return C floor. Now, if that number is higher than floor D, or the, the floor that is the destination, it'll run, as you can see, this is where the verbose output is put in for that. That'll determine what number. If it needs to go down, it'll be gray. And if it needs to go up, it'll be white. So if the destination floor is higher than the current floor, it needs to go up. And that's where it gets that output. Now, the number of times it needs to move is the equivalent of the highest value minus the lowest value. So then that will run the move elevator operation, which is right here. Now, as you can see, it can take in variables TMS and direct, which TMS is the number of times, which is how what this determines. And then the direction is based on the color specification. So then it tells it that it needs to do, you know, local level is 10 times the number of times. Now, I'll probably make this configurable at some point, but in the paste bin code I have, uh, that's not, it's not configurable. So you'll just have to come down here and change this number. Uh, but as you can see, it multiplies that by the number of times it needs to move. And then it does for I equals one to the given number. And it sleeps. So os.sleep is the wait function inside of uh, open computers. And it's based on seconds, not ticks like most Minecraft things. Because this is Lua and not technical Minecraft stuff. So it pulls the... In this case, the side is south. I really should have put that as a configuration thing at the top as well. But eh. I had to change it from east whenever I moved over to here. Which took a little bit of effort to figure out direction, and then the 15 is, of course, the signal strength. Now, this is draw control. This is called every single time the touchscreen function is called. So what it does is it draws the buttons. So for DCN, so that's being used to determine the, the number in the given table, and then DCS is the draw control screen table value, basically, so, say you're in table entry 1, which is colors.orange in this case, because it's monitor 1, then DCS will hold the address for the given screen, as predefined earlier. Now, in iPairs, so what this will do is it guarantees that it's doing it in order, so you don't end up with screwed up numbers, and it's pulling it from the screen floors variable I made, S floors, and for every single thing in that list, it's binding the monitor to the screen of that given one, setting its resolution, filling it with solid black. Then, for basically the this is just the variable, so it's it's NB, but it stands for number buttons basically because that's what I came up with. And it's going by the number of floors. For every floor, it'll check which number of NB it's on. So this only needs to run for as many floors as there's designated in your program. So in mine, it's designating five. So here's what it's doing. It's running, it basically needs to determine the X, and then for every single list here, the Y changes. But it, the Y is persistent throughout a group of three buttons. So this supports up to nine buttons. So as you saw, mine only has five on it instead of nine. Now if I were to remove or add a screen, that would, of course, gain or lose a button. So, basically what it's doing, it's taking the current number and negativing it by 3 for the case of, this is what's the middle row. The upper row is anything above number 6, so 7, 8, 9. And it's, of course, subtracting 6, because the X is going to remain a number that's the same, because it doesn't, you know, the X is across. So you want to make sure they're all placed in the same place, so that's what I had to come up with. And then, of course, this 
is the uh, the brackets, the square brackets on the outsides, and then the current number it's working on is inputted into the center, and it's just drawn onto the screen with GPU set. And then, of course, at the end of the entire thing, it binds back to the primary monitor, which is the one we're looking at now. Now, right here, this is the elevator, elevator moving text. It's pretty much the same thing, only we don't need the complicated calculations. And why are you not? You're supposed to be there, just for the sake of consistency. So, that just sets that. And, of course, the other one, you know, will clear it whenever it's going. And, of course, also binds back to the primary. Now, this is just the get floor function. It basically just goes through color floors. Color N is specified by the current number, which is 1 through the maximum number of floors currently installed. So this could be 1 to 1, even. And then all it will do is... If the number is greater than zero for the given number, which the given number is basically a color specification on the RedNet network, and greater than zero means that the signal is on in any way, shape, or form, it doesn't even check for 15 or anything, then that number must be the current floor. So then right here is the touchscreen control function T screen. It runs draw control. It calls up an event where the address of the providing monitor is stored in address. The screen X, the screen Y, and the player that clicked it is the event, and the event type is touch. Now, once that event finishes, these variables will, of course, been saturated, and it'll go through these variables. So, this is roughly the same formula used to draw the buttons in the first place, only the if-then statements are longer. Plus, there's a secondary if within each one of the things, because you want to make sure that you're clicking within those specified areas. So, as you can see, I mean, it's not really complicated math, but it, of course, takes the number, that it, which it determines which number it is, based on which one of these is true. Of course, these also are determined whether or not they're true, based on the current SX value. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then it just calls T screen, which if you look up here, the end of floor direction calls back to T screen. Now, of course, I could just put while true do T screen here, and then it would just rerun the entire program. And that's probably the more efficient way of doing it. But that's not what I did. The paste bin with the entire code will be available in the description of this video and uh, like I said there's a bit of a weird consistency issue but that might be fixed in newer versions of open computers as you might be able to tell I filled in the entire floor with concrete and I wanna I decided I wanna build the walls out of the aluminum blocks from Tinker's Construct because they're a nice clean texture I like it but I don't want to use aluminum blocks for it. Here's where I was making concrete. Oh, uh, where do I start? So I want to make a slaughterhouse for one. Which is made with an invar gear, which is just iron and invar. Pretty simple. And then invar tools are made with invar, as you would expect. And then the other standard materials. Now, this is to go along with our auto spawner. And you can see I filled my safari net with an enderman. Now, the slaughterhouse is good. You know, it produces liquid meat from killing entities. They don't you don't get anything else from it, no mob essence, no nothing, just liquid meat. So in order to do anything with the meat, you need a meat packer. It turns the liquid meat into a solid. Now, I'm gonna be trying to get this set up today because I need to solve my food issues. As far as I know, this is the last non watermelon food I have in storage. But for the walls we need a painting machine. Now you can paint certain things. So if we look at Ender I.O. There's painted slab, but this is also a painted slab because they stack and the textures will properly link together. Now, you can also paint conduit facades, which you can place wires in these to hide them. Uh, you know, basically you can consider it sort of like the facades from Buildcraft or whatever, but you can pretty much paint them with any texture. But I've got this set up in here, so what's going to happen is I'm going to put that in, that, 
is going to be set to extract stone slabs. And we're going to set this to an in out and it will extract basically painted slabs. Now, I don't have this sped up. Oh, and I need to give you... Oh, the block actually has to sit in there. I thought it was just a ghost image. Eh. But as you can see, we are producing painted slabs, which have a different ID. So now if we take these and place them down, you can see it looks like a full block, breaks into slabs. And that's pretty much what I'm going to be making the entire thing with. Uh, weird how they don't stack anymore. But, hmm. Oh well. That will eventually finish itself. I'll build the entirety of the walls out of that. And the ceiling... I'm not going to worry about that now. Uh, I want to get the other things going. I need conduits. You know what? I'll just request it into my bag. So I'll just request a stack of these, even though it's a bit unnecessary. A stack of these. So... This is basically my routing station. This is where the cable goes through on all the floors. And it does, in fact, go the whole way down all five floors. However, I only want to go down to floor three at the moment. Because uh, we're going to be working right about here. So I'm going to need... Well, the simplest way to do this is to just cut out these... Uh, see this? This is what I've been dealing with. Lakes of poison. It's actually getting a bit ridiculous. Cool. So, I'll just set up a blood lamp there. Now, chances are I'll eventually have the liquid stored elsewhere, but... Not in this particular case. Where is... This is another small issue I have with this. Is I don't really have a good way to access anything at the moment. So we just need to bring this down. Oh, I can't place it inside of there. Weird. Move out of my way, please. Because we need to get power. Where am I? I've lost myself. Okay, so I need to get over here. Right. Uh, I don't need you anymore. You know, I honestly have no idea if I have enough conduit for this, but I will find out. And eventually, I'm probably going to have the entirety of down here emptied out at some point. Hello, you. So, then right about here, I'm going to have the... This is going to be the slaughterhouse. The meat packer will then probably be linked right next to it. And then I want right there... So this, yes, it is. This is where I want the auto spawner. Bam. And then I'll put the slaughterhouse right here. Of course, you're facing the wrong way because you do that. There we go. And then I'm going to have a little, like, hidden access door here. Uh, I don't have one here, but kind of like the doors up there where from the one side they just look like wall. So I'm going to have that there. I might have to use actual aluminum blocks for that, but that's fine. Or, uh, I'm going to be honest here, I've looked into it, and the technical scientist accepted thing is aluminium. So, yeah. Technically, Americans are wrong. Just putting that out there. And I am, in fact, myself an American, and I am saying that I am wrong. Is there a problem here? But, anyhow. I could put these in the same blocks, I'm sure you noticed. But I'm keeping them separate. Because I want to make sure that... 
Yeah. I guess I don't need to. I was going to say I was keeping them separate because I wanted to make sure that the meat would not uh, end up inside of the... try to end up into that pipe. I mean, I could have disabled it, I suppose. But... Meh. Okay, so I'm going to run this down. That'll go here. Then run the liquid across here as well, and it will go up. And I'll send it up to there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to run it up higher just to make some things simpler. So then I'll put that there, that there. And I'm going to need to get power to the meat packer. I'll put that there. Oops. Where'd you go? Now, as I'm sure you saw, that was trying to run. Now, I want that to extract. I want you to be the insert. I'm going to need a whoop, chest. Uh, not the ender chest. Uh, gold. Gold would be good. I'm going to make sure I have plenty enough space. And then this will just auto-eject, and I'll worry about automatically getting the stuff later once I get all of that, the, the uh, structure for automatically doing things in place. So, that should be pretty much ready. Uh, this should be able to accept liquid. I'm just going to fly it. Whoop, too far. So, I've got this barrel of mob essence in here that the auto spawner needs to run. Oh. Oh, come on. Uh, I wonder... Uh, I've got fused glass. I'll use that. I want something I can easily break and pick back up. Although I'm probably, I might actually use quartz glass in this case, because, or maybe I could use the uh, R's magic wall. I swear that block gets a new texture every time I see it. Although, I'm going to be honest, that might just be because of the fact of it's showing a solid block there. But anyhow... If I were to supply this with a... Do I have any levers? I should have a lever. I don't know why I wouldn't. Really? None? Huh. Well, I suppose this is the time to look at, I believe, the mod name. Let's look at some switches. Oh, of course. Of course it requires a lever. Of course. You know what? I'm going to make it, just because I can. Uh, I need a stick. I should have some cobblestone on me. I'm going to need some iron. Three pieces of you. Some red. And now we'll just craft these in my built-in little crafting table here. Switches. Now, the only problem with the regular fluid conduits is they don't really translate things very well unless they're full. I say translate, but that is not the word I meant for. Three? Oh, yeah, three. Okay. Now, let's just put the Enderman in there. Enderman can't come out the too high spot, so it shouldn't be an issue. And there is Enderman. Why are you still dropping items? Oh, I know what's killing you. 
No. Let me out. Who will just... No. Stop. That should resolve that. I needed some ender pearls. There we go. Now, as you can see, there's stuff flowing into here. It's doing work. And we're getting raw meat ingots, which you can make a meat block, which is terrifying. You can make meat nuggets. Or you can craft the meat nuggets back into the meat ingots, or you can cook it. Now, as far as I know, a meat ingot is as good of a food as steak. So now anytime I'm getting low on food, I should be able to come down here, run this, and get a pretty ample supply of meat. So we're just going to let this run for a little while. And I want you to know at some point I'm going to make a built-in clock or something to let me know when it is. Oh, and I made the... You know what, let's ride this down to show that it goes the whole way down. So here's this partially cleared fort. More poison. It's getting a bit ridiculous. And here we are, floor 5. Now, these are carpenter's blocks because if you try and walk on concrete from chisel, as you can see, it's slightly lower and it's kind of like moving on ice and it doesn't work very well with some things. Especially these two high doors, I can't walk through them. So I used carpenter's blocks and then put the chisel blocks in them. But uh, this gives me a sort of access down to the bottom. This floor still has its configuration floor, basically. And as you can tell, I haven't even dug this floor out yet. And I've done it slightly to this one. Look at that. Poison everywhere. So let's just call the elevator back up. See, I wasn't originally make a call button for the floors that's not on. But that just seems like a lot of unnecessary work, and it's just simpler to have this one solid interface and just be able to call it straight up to me. So we'll go back up to floor two. And... I'm not going to lie. It moves a bit glitchily, but... Uh, I like it. Why... Why do you do this? So very strange. So, I'm not sure if I want to put it here. I do know that this wall needs to be filled in, whereas the others need to be dug out. So, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to look. But eh, I kind of like it actually. Hmm. I think once I get the all the walls done with it, it'll look all right. And see, it looks really, really out. Of, oh, this wall needs to come into one as well, which is a problem. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill in this corner with blocks because the corner really doesn't matter. And now I should be able to do this without really an issue. I'm not sure about this. The unfortunate part is I don't think I want to bring it in one because then I'd have to move everything one and I don't want to do that at this point. Uh, but I also... I, I don't know. 
it's one of those things where it's kind of reached a point of, I'm not sure what I want to do with you. Oh, stop that. Now, chances are the tunnels are going to come down one. See, we, we got not as far as I would have liked on that. If I'm being honest. I wonder if I can paint for science. Can I put double slab in there? And will you paint it? Huh. What if I make a double double slab? Would you paint that? And if you do paint it, how does it turn out? Does it seriously still just get spat out as a regular slab? I'm a bit disappointed in that, but... I can live with it. So eventually I'll do this all along the walls. And the ceiling, well no, not the ceiling. Uh, I don't know how long this is getting, but here is my plans for the ceiling. Not factory, uh, I believe it's future, not furture. Hello? That chisel? Right in here somewhere. These blocks. Futuristic armor plating block, which are a chisel thing of this. I think I'm going to make those for the ceiling. You know, we could do that pretty easily. Uh, let's just grab some of you. Uh, iron. Throw you back in there, and we'll do... Oops. Yeah, about that. Like that. That should be good. Now, I'm not... I don't think this is going to be anywhere near enough to do one ceiling here, but I'm curious. That is not the smartest way to access that. Just putting that out there. And this is why I need to get a ladder on the routing station. Although I'm tempted to just bring the ceiling of every floor down one so I get uh, three spaces and then I'll just run like the wires on the ceilings or something. That that is something I could do. Or you could run all the wires along the walls. Or... Uh... You know, I don't need them to be this high. So let's cancel that. I will just bring all of the ceilings down one. And what this will let me do is I'll be able to use factory blocks as the flooring of these rooms. Uh, and then, yeah, so I can give them their own little touch. Ooh, I accidentally broke you. This is the only problem I have, is sometimes I have difficulties getting off the ladder. Because I'm actually not in the same block as the ladder in some cases. So, this also, whoops, eliminates the problem I had with needing to jump place. So if I have to do it here, I'll have to do it on every floor. And I'd rather avoid that if possible. So, uh, I'll fill it in with marble cobblestone because I have it. 
I'm skimping on corners because I'm cheap and I'm lazy. So, I don't remember how big this room is, but I know that it's way too big for the one stack of this to make use of it. Keep in mind, it could very well be 7x7. Seven seven. Although it's not. It's 9x9, nine nine, which means I would need 81 blocks to finish the ceiling. And then, of course, I'll make more. But this should be good enough to get an idea. Eh, it's darker than I remember it. Hmm. Hmm. What are my alternatives? Might as well just look through chisel for alternatives, because certain blocks, such as the factory blocks down here, I mean, I don't want to use these, because I want to use them for a different project at some point. But unfortunately, it's looking like my options are limited. So I might just go with the armor plating blocks I have up there now. Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. Yeah, that sounds good enough. I'll, I'll use, I will use some of these because I'm planning on using the slopes in here and I'll occasionally I'll put a vent in one of them so it looks like I actually have ventilation and I'm thinking about using the gas craft fans but I'm not actually going to use them I'm gonna put them in the ceiling on sockets basically dummy sockets for an aesthetics purpose and then if I really want to, I actually could use them at some point, but I don't really see why. But uh, this is my little, this is my little desk that I set up. This feature right here with the keyboards was actually not an original feature, and I realized that when I move around like this, I sound like I get farther or closer to the microphone. But I'll be sitting here, I'll be talking, and then I'll end up relaxing back in my chair and slowly getting farther away. But the keyboard. Being able to sit here was actually a request by somebody on the thread. So, he does take input from people. And that is a very important thing as a mod maker, in my opinion. Why are you there? Oh, there was probably aluminum there, and then I... Aluminium. Hey, where'd you go? There was probably some there, and then it got cut out whenever I ran the digital miner. Are you all processed? Are you all processed? Good. Good. Yeah, that is a lot of tin. Honestly, I could probably almost make the walls straight out of tin. Although, or not tin, aluminum. Aluminium? What are we doing over here? Why are you screwing up occasionally? That's really strange. That is really strange, I'm not going to lie. Huh. I don't understand you. Okay. Whatever. Uh, so... These will eventually move. A majority of the regular machines will probably end up over here somewhere. In a room down that way. I'll probably set this up. This specific part is sort of maybe like a decontamination chamber or something. And soon enough, I'm going to need to get some power going. But I'm going to need better access to ender pearls before I can make that work. Well... Getting access to Ender Pearls isn't really an issue because apparently I can turn on my modular force field and it will kill these guys. Are you? You're already empty? How much meat did we get? That doesn't seem right. No, you're on. 
Oh, like I said, it has weird things going on with pressure. Uh, there is another type of conduit. Liquid conduit. It is the pressurized fluid conduit. So, let's just look. have a look-see at that. It is made from fused quartz, which is made from four quartz and an alloy smelter. I did make some, as I'm sure you saw. And I was playing around with the Fortron. It, it's not a whole lot. Fortron, like, you'd have to store it in probably millions. Where did you come from? There shouldn't be any dark spaces. Where did you come from? Huh, what? Excuse me, but where are these coming from? Is there like a zombie spawner above? Oh, oh, oh! Problem solved. Slaughter them. Give me more meat. So I'm gonna probably let it drain through this entire barrel. Uh, let's just grab us the meat that we have. Oh, ow! Eventually, the little safety railings are going to come the whole way down. I think once that's finished, it'll look alright. I hope. If it doesn't, I may actually choose to try something else in its place. I could always use more painted blocks. Although I've already used aluminum, so that's probably a bad idea. And I'd have to make a ton of slabs. And I'm already working off the slabs that I got from the castle. I've still got some stone brick slabs. I don't know if those will work in it. But... Mmm... Meat ingots. Between the healing and the jumping, maybe, just maybe, I can make my food bar go down. I've been getting a lot of, uh... Zombie skulls for some reason, or zombie heads. Not quite sure why. But, uh, oh, too far. Level three. Over this way, I'm going to start having actual farms. Uh, chances are they might, they'll probably be magical crops based farms. Over here, I'm going to have the animal farms. Uh, the slaughterhouse is probably going to be somewhere on its own, most likely. Probably at the end of this, so what it'll do is, sort of like I have the fish tank room, how it's the end of a direction, this will probably be on the end of the animal's direction, and then over here I'll have Enderman, Wither Skeletons, uh, these are two more access rooms, and I'll probably do this for a majority of the mobs I could use, including, well, I'll probably have squids over here at some point, everything will be done via auto spawners, not actual breeding, because I don't, I don't care for actual breeding, and I can make tons of mob essence quicker than I can make the materials for breeding. So the, this entire floor is basically going to be farms. Uh, the next floor down, floor four. Elevator down, sir. Uh, the floor down here, this will be the storage floor, so it probably won't have too much on it. it it's probably just going to have actually three rooms, as opposed to standard things. So I'll have items, I'll probably have, like, liquids over there, and then I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, right. I know what I could put there, so I can have, say, liquids there, items there, and then power there. Now, power is going to mostly contain whew, uh, uh, capacitor banks from Ender IO. So I am going to need to get auto crafting for that going at some point. And the whole point of the elevator moving thing is I wanted to make it apparent 
that you couldn't activate anything to do with the elevator while it was moving. You shouldn't be able to break it, and it does give it a bit of a wait sequence. So I'm going to throw this back in here, and I'm going to enjoy, enjoy my juicy Enderman meal. Mmm, Enderman. I'm going to actually let my food bar go down, because I want to know how much it actually does. And then I think at that point we will conclude the video. Uh, I'm probably going to make more... I was using that button for fixing the elevator when the persistency screwed it up earlier. But, uh, yeah, never try to go to floor one when the persistency is screwed up. Like I said, I don't know if that's fixed in newer versions or not. I'm just going to let Resonant Rise handle the updating of things. And I'm going to fill in a lot of this. I'm going to put slopes here, so I'm probably not going to fill in either of these two slots. But definitely these three and... Yeah, I think the walls too. And then I'll use slopes coming in. And then I should be able to put a slope there and it should form itself into the corner. Uh, actually, let's test that. Slope. So, I grab these, and if I put that there, but then say I put that not there, there. Hmm. Now, a little trick I learned from watching Akko's videos, which he watched somebody else's to figure this out, is you can actually mouse wheel. That is going the opposite direction of what I was after. I'm not sure if you can actually do this, to be honest. Uh... Because of what I'm trying to do here. I don't know why it wouldn't want to connect, although I suppose that's probably not a feature it's supposed to do. Uh, no. Am I going to put the... Uh... I don't know. Uh, honestly, I'll figure this out at some point. Can I, like, lose health or something? Or not health, but... Uh, you know what? Oh, good. Because... Because of what floor I'm on. Whee! I didn't want to fall... The full distance. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Or I'm gonna miss. There! Start healing, and that'll quickly use up a su supply of food. Except for when I stop healing. That kind of backfired. But I believe roughly 20 jumps is half a bar. I'm just trying to get it down to like 5 so I can get a good representation of where it should be. Uh, you know what? I can take the plunge for science. By plunge, aren't you? Because this gives me hunger. A hunger debuff. And so I should be able to drop myself down pretty quickly with it. Now, I believe the Hunger Debuff increases the cost of actions by... Oh, come on. Just produce my food, please. It's so hard to empty your food bar when you're actually trying. That actually restored more food than meat. I have found my new source of food. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of base building using the materials I've showed you off camera. 
in between episodes. Do not need you or you anymore. Or you. I don't know if I ever... I think I showed this probably twice now, but capacitor to make it go faster. That's it. Do I have any more? No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call this good here. I will see you guys next time. Have a good day.